Hello and welcome to another episode of Bing Chat Before Bedtime. And yeah, the milk and cookies have definitely been keeping me up recently. I went down a bit of a course creation rabbit hole. So I don't know if you're like me, but in trying out Bing Chat or the other forms of chat, all the different foundation model based chat systems out there one thing that comes into your head if you're using it for serious purposes or creative purposes uh, or to speed something up the first thing I always goes on I wish I had a like a tool like this when I was doing x so for me it's like I wish I had a tool like this when I was writing course materials because what used to happen is I'd always write new course materials or at least revise them every year for two courses I taught on one in uh, certificate management studies and one in diploma management studies one was on management information systems um, which I think eventually was a course on project management and the other was on information management just bring this across here actually while I'm talking so both of those courses required a lot of research Obviously, they were in disciplines that I was already familiar with to um, postgraduate level. And I was teaching like mainly an undergraduate students, although there was one course which was postgraduate level. And obviously, I had a wealth of information to pull on or pull from. Um, and primarily, I either based the course around a particular book or... Um, more often than not, learning outcomes that were stipulated by the awarding body. So I'd build out from that. And so I would spend the summer putting those materials together. Now, that would be fine, probably if I was a full time lecturer and you know, not so much had the summer off. But, you know, there was that break. There's a break in further education, which is around about August in the UK. Higher education can be a bit wider, um, you know, up to 16 education at sort of secondary school. Again, different still. But in further education, there's a, a definite gap in August where lecturers will write up their course materials or not, as the case may be. My problem was that I was a sessional lecturer, so I was doing lecturing alongside my day-to-day -day business which was working for myself doing training and troubleshooting for businesses and IT generally um, end users so it was difficult you know with all that vying for my attention so a tool like this would have been fantastic so last night I went through some different scenarios that I'm going to recreate here so one was for a programming language course so uh, getting Bing Chat to create a table. Excuse me, I just need to take a sip. To create a table to list the most recently released programming languages along with the year in the least. Blah, 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 blah. So the idea was to pick one, the most recent one. Now, it's it, what it does is it, it's actually doing it by version release, not original release. I'd probably have to refine that if I wanted to do original release, like if I wanted to come up with Bosque or is it Carbon, which is the new Google one, which I don't think has been formally released yet. Um, but it picked up Crystal because Crystal's had a version release, I think, in March. Um, so I thought, OK, that's a good one to go with. Um, so do that. Get it to just write a lesson plan for week one and then create. What it was doing is it was it was suggesting to read articles as part of the course. So I thought, well, why don't I get it to create an article? So this is just a prompt for me to fill this in. Some of this stuff you can get clever with prompt engineering and actually get it to feed in stuff from the lines before. I've not, I'm not that advanced yet. Um, I'm reading through a really good course online about prompt engineering. And um, I'll include a link in the description actually to that course if anybody's interested but I've not I'm not quite there yet in um, concatenating and aggregating everything 
but you know sometimes it's nice to split this all down and then as you get better at it concatenate your prompts uh, another thing I tried was prediction for a domain of expertise and this idea where you prime I'm trying to think of a better word for it but you prime the chat uh, in the prompt by saying you are a very experienced X and then ask it to do something another thing I tried was create a course for technological cross discipline so I was, I'm always really interested in this is like if you get two technological disciplines and you cross them what would a course look like uh, so I'm thinking well can it do that for me and then finally this is and something I've been, been, been playing around recently is writing a course based around a research paper uh, and this is something I actually tried um, it was more being before I could have been before breakfast because that's what it was as I was having my breakfast I was playing around with this anyway let's try a few of these out so let's do this we're in creative mode and I'm going to go can you create a well I'll copy it across actually there we go create a table that lists the most recent programming languages with the use order in reverse date order let's see what happens now I'm hoping that crystal again is going to be top of the list but we'll see. I can put this in and then now once it comes back, I'm going to say 12 weeks. Uh, most of the short courses I've done on programming over the years have been 12 weeks. So it's funny. I don't know where it's getting these from. 2021. Crystal's a lot older than that. But anyway. Let's just go with that. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the case. I, I know I know it had been um, released as a concept for quite a number of years, but uh, I believe it's a lot older. So we will stick with this. Again, yeah, when you're doing this, it doesn't replace fact checking. You, you do need, if you, you know, if you're doing this for course materials, you still have to go through and you know debug <laughs> for want of a better word so you're an expert in the crystal programming age create a course outline for a 12-week introduction to crystal with each week requiring five hours of study time that's around about when i was doing open university courses that was the the uh normally the stipulated uh weekly time spent pretty used to spend a lot more than that okay here we go so here we go so for each of these what you can do is simply pick like a week and then ask it to write lecture notes or an article or handouts on how to use whatever so that'd be one way to do it so you can build it up slowly now oh look there we go create a crystal application that's the final project that's pretty cool so there we have that now i'm trying not to mess this up by going out here but um Obviously, I'm not sure exactly where it's pulling this from. Although, if I copy from here, let me show you the referenced output. There you go. So that's the resources it, it's actually pulling from. So that's pretty interesting. Um, so now what we'll do is, and again, you know, over time I'd probably get better at um, condensing this down so I'm not blowing my um, amount of questions within a topic because as soon as I press this it just forgets so if that wasn't possible and you did have to use more than 20 for all of this like you were literally asking it to produce um, 
you know, lesson plans or whatever for each one of these, you're going to have to devise a way um, of restating this after you've wiped its memory. Now, the easy way to do this is you wouldn't want to keep repeating this, but what you could probably do is... Um, okay, so he says, funny, I'm not an expert. Okay, didn't go with my scenario. I think it did the other night. It was going, oh, yes, I'm an expert. Um, but the thing is, you you could take these and say, you know, create um, a lesson plan or courts handouts for what is crystal and why to use it, that sort of thing. Um, and again, prime it in some way just so, you know, I mean, you don't have to do this, but I found you sometimes get better results if you massage its ego a little bit or just set up the scenario in creative mode. I mean, you know, I don't want to put, you know, you are a pirate, um, which seems to be the trendy thing to do. Design a course in crystal programming languages or language. So, um, yeah, let's let's just do this. Can you write a lesson plan? Oops, no. I don't want to feed that back in there, do I? You can get 2,000 things, or what was it? 2,000 words in there. Can you write a lesson plan for week one? Um, and then we'll see what happens from there. So it's looking up how to write a lesson plan. And hopefully... Okay, objectives. Students will be able to explain. Okay. Learn how to use it. Install and run crystal programs and use basic syntax and data types. Oh, this is impressive. This is much better than it. Um, necessarily did before. Again, you get you know, different results on different days. That's why I, I would be tempted. So if I wanted to have a, sold, a whole load of listen, lesson plans, I would just generate them in one chat uh, conversation. So you know, do week one, then week two, week three. So it really locks on and doing lesson plans. And then I'd probably run out of prompts. So what I would then do is um, wipe it clean, put another prompt in, but have that initial prompt, just get it to lock on. Um, I don't know if I'd need to restate this. What I could do is say write a, a lesson plan based around, yeah, this. Somehow, somehow I've got to refresh its memory. So that that's always the problem. Um, but if I if I wasn't interested in in writing handouts, maybe I'm just gonna use this as a lesson plan and have no handouts. So anyway, that's something you know again for people to think about. But that's just a, a heads up: is once you run out of prompts, you got to wipe the memory clean. That means setting up again so that you can carry on where you left off however you decide to do your initial prompt yeah so there we go i'll just let that finish off one thing i will do let me just try this while I've got this on here, while it's sort of locked in. So I found something that was interesting to to ask it when you're designing course materials. It's actually to write an article. And it, you know, writes an article very much. I mean, you could say write an article 
for um, for the web actually to be a bit more specific you see you can hear um, so if he does this then sometimes just doing this continue so you know you already start to run into problems uh, one thing you could do is you could say restrict the lesson plan to so many words because what it's doing is is running out here um, yeah okay we've got there is it just repeating itself a little bit it might be no right so if I now say I could say write a, an article I could say write an article about what is crystal and how to use it uh, I could say write an article based on week one um, obviously I could get a bit clever and say you know um, thousand word article let me try that I didn't try this last night actually Two thousand. No, one thousand. <laughs> See whether it does it. Okay. So let me queue up. So let's look up about how to write a thousand-word article. Here we go. So let's see what it does. It looks like it's titling up the sections. What is crystal and why use it? So again, this is why it's really important to capture your previous work because you might have to use some of that stuff to reprompt when you wipe this clean. And if you don't and you wipe it clean, you know, you lost it. So yeah, I probably shouldn't have put a restriction on there. It's going to run out. Yeah, so this is what I found really useful here. Um, I was doing something like this the other night. And again, all this would have to be uh, fact-checked. Yeah, so I've shot myself a bit in the foot there. So if I do continue the article, see what it does. I'm going to stop it anyway. If um, it balks at that, yeah. Okay, so that that's one way. So yeah, don't probably don't put in the limitation. So let's wipe it clean, try the next one. So a very experienced futurologist and expert in foundation models. What would be your prediction for the next types of foundation model that we might see in the next year? And you can change that one to three years or it's probably gonna say I'm not an experienced futurologist. Oh, here we go. Yeah. It's being very modest. So. so now it's going to give us some directions that it possibly could go in. So again, the idea here being, you can see where I'm going with this and I'm not going to do it. You would start writing training materials or study materials or whatever. And of course you can go down lots of different 
branches here you don't have to do that you can just ask it to give you more information or it'll obviously cross link everything and there we go so moving on one that's now more of a, a course in so here what i was curious about is okay what you know people are always obsessed with with job titles and studying for the next big thing um, so let's do one to three years so you're a futurologist and technologist what are your predictions for job titles in, in emerging technologies in the next one to three years vaccine specialist AI lawyer cloud vendor liaison so when I tried it last night I was a bit more specific I, I I think I said computer sciences. Um, so the idea is then what I did was I said, what might a cross discipline of J1 and J2, the J1 and J2 being the job titles. And again, there's clever ways with um, these sort of interfaces where you can um say you know pick pick one call them j1 j2 um, some are better than others but at the moment i'm keeping it simple so oh what do we want to cross crossover out of vaccine specialist and ai lawyer data compliance cloud vendor liaison okay let's let's try I lawyer and robotics engineer that should be fairly straightforward I mean the two are very close anyway the one that when I did it the other night it was the suggestions it came up with were uh, I think like metaverse type stuff and AI actually was metaverse and security so i said like what a what would a metaverse security officer um yeah what what, what might a cross discipline of metaverse security uh, sorry metaverse engineer and cyber security officer look like or cover within this do domain so let's do that so I should have advised people to to make a beverage before this video because this is quite long even though I've got everything primed and ready to go okay so there we go that's pretty straightforward so now we go in your opinion how long would an introductory course to this cross discipline be or take maybe no, let's leave it as B probably doesn't matter let's see if it gives me a, a week um, when I tried this I got eight week course um, Okay, I don't have a personal problem. Several factors. Let's make an educated guess. <laughs> I guess. Um, would a twelve week short course 
be unreasonable. Okay. So let's assume the course is 12 weeks. What learning outcomes do you use? At least one per week. Okay. What I'll do is I'll put the questions or the generic questions before I edited them um, in the call in the course description in the video description. So I'm going to have a go at this next, but I don't know how successful it's going to be because this is. Um, A lot of stuff here. So create a course outline for the 12 week course when each week is a three hour module and map the modules to the outcome. So we'll see how well it does. I don't hold out a lot of hope, but it's always interesting to push this a bit. And then I've got one more example after this one and then we'll call it a wrap. And again, you hang on, what's it doing there? Oh, okay. So it's, it's, yeah, it's slightly reinterpreted. Maybe I wasn't quite as clear, but it doesn't matter. So it's almost each week is a three hour module. So it's what it's doing is for each week, it's got module one, two, and three. So I suppose you could say each one is an hour long. So probably need to be a bit more specific there or amend my wording. Um. Okay, so I just do please always be polite to AI. You never know when it's going to become, you know, uh, robot overlord so <laughs> although if I'm wiping wiping its memory every time okay but you get the gist so I might actually stop it here rather than watch it finally this one which I played around with this morning um, so this one is for a paper about, uh, let me just see if I can, it's this paper, Hyena hi Hierarchy. So just found about it this morning. You are an expert in, I don't even probably, yeah, I just got into a habit of doing this. But, 
Okay. So now what I'm going to do is give it the paper. And ask it how long a course would you design to understand the concepts discussed in the following paper. Okay, see if we can do it this time. I have a bit of a, an obsession. Yeah, here we go. So it's buried in here. So I would estimate the course covering these topics would take between 10 to 20 hours. So what I'm going to do is so write let's do 10 course outcomes that will map to a 10 week course. So again, I'm slightly rewording this to try stuff out. Match each map each outcome to each week for each week write a lesson outline which supports the corresponding um, outcome. Yeah, we'll just do with a lesson outline I could stipulate you know okay each lesson is what a lesson outline let me just do each lesson is two hours and again when you word these sometimes the obviously the order um, there's a skill in doing the order, which I haven't quite mastered yet. There we go. So you can see what it's doing now. So then what you could do is we'll give this a try for week um, week one. We'll see how well it does. In my original one. Just got that highlighted in blue while it's playing over. So for each X week X write an article lecture notes and handouts and you can sort of decide how you're going to do that so we've got 10 weeks here I'm not going to get it to continue so what I'm going to do is so something like this let's try this for a week and this is how a great way of just experimenting um, and seeing like how well it does in terms of producing stuff that is going to be uh, in in a way that you don't use up those 20 prompts sorry I keep bashing the microphone those um, 20 prompts yeah for, for a week one please provide a provide lecture notes and a handout we'll, we'll stick with that because that should be sufficient um, but you can ask for other things you could say and some exercises or a project and the other thing actually I'd, I've not asked yet I'll, I'll do it in a moment is I get it get it to write a, a lesson plan which is slightly different and anybody I should dig out my old um, teacher training stuff there's a course I did when I was uh, lecturing which was what they call an in-service qualification with City and Guilds so I did my stage one I had a code I can't remember what it was called like 7304 
um, and there was like eight modules and each one you had to write an essay and integrate it into your practice. Um, but what was good there is, you know, in within that you they had these standard formats for um, outcomes, for lesson plans, for like course plans, all those things. So I could go back through that and um, do that. Oh, that's interesting. OK, so if I do write a lesson plan for week one. And the other thing is I could probably show it like a sample prime it with like a sample structure um, because often it's like a table where you have the sort of resources you're going to use, what modes of learning you're going to use. Um, just just to ensure that you're you're doing like a mixed media delivery and it's not just a chalk and talk. OK, this is this is good. So we'll see if it's yeah, so it's, it still knows that it's two hours. So again, when you're doing this, you need to plan how many prompts you think you're going to need. Um, so you get the job done in a single discussion if you can. Now, probably what I could have done is is just brought this together so when I asked it um, here so let's just give that as an example so if I do this so for week two otherwise it will bark at me and say I've already given you this information which it does do provide a lesson plan and you could obviously use a lesson plan as your lecture notes um, but let's do student handout doesn't really matter and we'll just see how far it gets and whether or not if I have to sometimes it'll prompt you and say do you want me to continue and um, I'm never, I can never remember, I'll have to check next time when you click that, whether or not that counts as a separate prompt. But uh, yeah, I was, I spent hours last night messing around with this because I could see the, how time saving this would be when I think how, you know, much time it used to take me to write lesson plans and um, you know, everything else. Although I'd always write the handouts before I wrote the lesson plans. And then I'd use the handout as, as lecture notes. Oh, crikey, look at that. That's impressive. Oh, yeah, that was, it was, that's what it was doing this morning. I don't, again, I'd have to check those, unfortunately. At least it's not matrix. Well, oh yeah, I was going to say matrix mul multiplication, fun and games. Um, yeah, so we have, let's just do uh, continue. Sometimes I'll say something like, oh, you missed a bit. Uh, I bet it's going to. Yeah, it's going to count that, so. You might want to get a bit clever with this if you were doing this. Like I said, the, probably the smart thing to do is to to do all the weeks together, but don't do lecture notes, handouts, and um, lesson plans simultaneously, and then find a way of, of re-imparting <laughs> uh, the core structure back on a fresh prompt maybe hopefully at some time they might put this up to say 40 which would be really cool well 
I think I've overloaded it a bit here. I'm never sure whether that, you know, whether it's finished here. Uh, you could probably check. It is talking about convolution, so. Yeah. Oh, look at that. And again, you'd, you could you know, expand out from this. So hopefully that was was enlightening. Um, certainly, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I'm having, you know, uh, uh, this is real fun doing all this stuff. Um, and I know I've been overloading the channel with it somewhat, but uh, I don't know any other way of really getting it out there. Um, you know, or it, to me, it, it is the best way through showing people that like, this is what you can do with it. So thanks once again for watching. Bye for now. And I'll catch you in the next video.